Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now, a little over two months ago, I shared my top tips for living small after having lived in a tiny six square meter dorm and currently living in a 34 square meter flat with my boyfriend. And because so many of you love the video, surprise, I'm back with the part two. I'm super excited to be sharing eight more tips on living small that you can use in your own small apartment. Also, big shout out to Cricut for being the sponsor of today's video, more on them later. But now, let's start with the first tip. Let's tackle the issue of where to dispose of laundry when you live small. I have a feeling you're gonna laugh when you see this. This has been our laundry basket for the past six months. Yes, it is a big shopping bag. <laughs> what we kind of realized and the reason we ordered a new one is because we don't think there will ever be space in the bedroom or like an opening for a laundry bin. There's furniture in every single nook and corner of this room. We've really maxed it out. If we're gonna get a laundry bin, which we do need because this bag is tearing up, it'll one, have to be a really small one and two, take up a little bit of space that we don't really want to but we're gonna have to compromise anyway the first place we thought about having our laundry basket was actually inside our closet there's tons of these over the door laundry baskets sold online i actually had this exact one when i lived at uni but i also found some other nicer ones that i'll link below the only issue with these types of laundry bins is that they don't actually hold a lot of laundry and because i live with another person aka my boyfriend. We collectively decided to use this little space between our furniture instead, which fits a tall but slim laundry basket. And I found this one from Amazon. Now, if you live small, you'll know exactly how little it takes to make your entire flat look messy. I specifically have this issue with our kitchen, no matter how clean it actually is. Because there's so many different types of bottles and products and labels out on the counters, because it's so small, it just looks messy. But a super easy fix is just to swap your visible products into the same types of containers. And to do this, I'm gonna use my Cricut machine to create my own custom bottles. Now, the Cricut machine is essentially a smart cutting machine that lets me create personalized products projects with hundreds of materials from paper to vinyl to iron-ons and you can even use pens to write and draw for you. I've already used my Cricut for projects all over the flat to help me organize and save space but this time I'm going to be using smart label writable vinyl and Cricut pens to create custom labels for our dish and a hand soap. So the first thing I did was going into Cricut design space on my computer and using the built-in shapes and text to create a label design that I like. Once I was happy I made sure to attach my designs and click make it to send this over to my Cricut machine to draw and cut out. And for the final steps, I simply remove the labels from the excess vinyl and attach each to my plastic bottles. I'm already obsessed with how these look. Finally, I just unscrewed the caps and transferred the dish soap and hand soap from the old bottles to the new bottles. This step is really a test of patience. <laughs> Another easy way to use symmetry to make your space look less messy is just to buy multiple of the same item. So instead of different chairs, different pillows and tea towels, just get multiple of the same ones. Yep, very straightforward, but it works. Another issue when living small is having little to no entryway space. Okay, so this is the hallway that leads down to the kitchen, but it's also the only space we have for a hallway in the entire flat. And although there's probably like 30 centimeters of space we can utilize here, that's gonna be very useful because we're gonna create this mini, mini hallway into a mini useful hallway. Let's go. So because we're working with such a tiny area here, I really had to think hard about what to do with shoe storage because as you can tell, a normal shoe stand just won't work. The only option really is to get a vertical shoe rack. This isn't really something you come across in lots of stores, but here are some of the best ones that I found. The shoe stand we ended up getting is from Yamasaki and I love how sleek it looks in our hallway. Now next to the shoe stand, there's a tiny wall that I decided to attach commandos onto so I could hang my tiny bags. This hallway is so tiny that it's really all about utilizing every single inch of space that I find at this point. When it comes to jackets and coats and other outerwear, we typically store this in our wardrobe. However, I got this removable over the door coat hook for whenever guests are over. In the past, they've had to leave coats on our bed or on the chairs so having this coat hook for the past few days has been super useful next i want to tell you the importance of organizing your storage based on frequency of use and i want to show you how to do this underneath our bed 
So first, you're gonna need a lot of boxes. These boxes are all from Ikea, and I like them because they're all low enough to fit under my bed. And they all have lids, so they don't get a lot of dust in them. And it's important to get different size boxes because this will help you organize different types of things. These boxes I'm planning to have in the back of the bed to have tons of miscellaneous items that aren't used very frequently. These boxes are meant to be in front of the bed, and they're meant to organize more used items that I don't have that much of in each category. Once you fold up all the boxes, you want to create labels so you can easily distinguish what's inside each box. And to do this, I'm bringing out my Cricut again. So in Cricut Design Space, I will be creating two types of labels. One where I'm just writing what's in the box over two lines, and the other with a very similar design to the soap labels that I made earlier. I clicked make it and had my Cricut machine cut everything out of white and black vinyl. Now, because I didn't use a pen this time, I need to add the black text onto the white part of the label. And voila, that's our first labels. For the clear boxes, I went with a much more simple design and this was really easy to put together. I just used transfer tape again. And once everything was successfully labeled, it was time to put the boxes back into their place. Starting with the ones with items I used the least and ending with the ones I used the most frequently. And a little tip here, if you're going to be putting boxes on the floor like I did, add some felt to the bottom of the box and they'll slide much more easily. It might be an idea to take an alternative approach to finding furniture. What do I mean by this? First, you should look at the space you have available. Then, you should look at furniture items that fit that size and usage. Next to my bed, for instance, there's no room for a chunky night table. So after having measured the space, I found this shelf-like piece from IKEA Circular Hub, which happens to fit perfectly into the corner next to our bed. And although it's not actually a night table, it's the perfect example of an alternative furniture that just works. about me and Theo is that it actually took us six months to find a coffee table that we liked and this was because it needed to be small enough for our living room under 90 centimeters long and still fit our style what we did in the end was actually getting what's called a mini coffee table I don't really know if it's meant for kids rooms or just tiny spaces but nevertheless it works and we love it When you live small, it might be a good idea to have a lot of your decor pieces also be practical. I decorated our coffee table with these animal placemats from Liberty London. They're fun, they're colorful, and whenever I don't use them, I just put them into a little pile and display them as decoration. So the general idea of this tip is that you don't need to go out and get items that are just gonna be still decor pieces. Items that you need to use often can be just as nice of a decoration too. Take our glasses, for example, or our crates that store chargers. Next, let's talk about how to maximize the very limited cover space you probably have. I talk a lot about making the most out of the space you have. However, there is one place in our flat that we have struggled since day one to maximize space, and it's this cupboard. This is where we keep everything in our kitchen that we don't have anywhere else to put. Napkins, Easter eggs, cocktail shakers, a lot of stuff in here. And it's gotten to the point that it's so messy and unorganized that every time I pull something out, something falls. So today I'm making it my plan to actually organize this cupboard and make the most of the space because it's due time. I'm bringing in a few items to help me organize this cupboard. And the first one is a customizable cookware rack. This will allow me to store my pans, pots, and oven dishes vertically instead of just laying flat on top of each other. And when it comes to my pots, I'm just putting one into the other to save space. Now for the shelf below, I'm adding in this adjustable extra shelf so I can compartmentalize all the items that need to be in this cupboard a little bit more. Coffee capsules, water bottles go on top, and all the bigger items go below. I also made sure to add all the other miscellaneous items that end up in this cupboard into a crate so they're not just laying around and making a mess. And finally, wherever possible, stack your items. You saw this already in the hallway where we use stacking to take advantage of the height of the space, but we also use this tip elsewhere in the flat, like in the kitchen with our plates and our bowls. 
and for all those items you own that aren't naturally stackable by themselves. There are a lot of products out there, like these shoe organizers from Ikea, that can help you out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned some useful tips that you can start using in your own small flat. Make sure to watch part one if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!